So how good does Fortnite look on the Optima HD 143X? Well, I'm going to answer that question in this video. Hey guys, my name is Mike and this is Tech404. So I've actually lived with this projector now for a solid three weeks and I've actually used it as my primary projector and I've found some things that I don't like and some things that I do like and I've also found that tweaking the settings I can actually improve the image a little bit more. So I'm going to share all of this in this video, including a 3D experience test of the projector and see how well it performs. So stick around. This is the follow-up to the HD 143X review. This is the Nebula Capsule by Anker, a Pico projector featuring a full aluminum body with a 360 degree speaker. Running on Android 7.1, it's capable of four hours of continuous video play. Learn more at the link in the video description. So one thing I'll say for this projector straight off the bat, so this is about 2.30 in the afternoon, and this is about 6.30 in the afternoon, and even with a lot of ambient light, you can actually still play games or even watch movies. You just have to tweak the settings a little bit. Now here I'll put the projector into game mode and increase the brightness a tiny amount of things about full stops, and as you can see, the image is more than adequate for actual daytime playing. And you know what, in ambient light, this projector honestly has performed pretty impressively. So firstly our base system is a Ryzen 5 CPU and it's got 16 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1050 Ti and most of the games that we're actually going to be playing is going to be at full 1080p 60fps. Um, in terms of how big the screen size is that you can actually see, because this screen was specifically designed for the Xiaomi laser projector, the screen that we're actually, uh, screen size we're actually playing at is around 86 inches, and honestly the game looks absolutely amazing, it doesn't actually help my gameplay because I suck at Fortnite, I've never played it too much, I'm outside of the eye of the storm right now. Let me just tell you one thing that I did actually experience, now in terms of input lag and latency, I haven't actually had a chance to test that yet, but when I do I will actually post some images on the Facebook page so I'll link it in the video description if you want to go follow the Facebook page um, but I want this to be more about the actual user experience now me sitting on a couch playing with a keyboard and mouse and this is what I'm actually trying to get and convey to you guys in terms of what the experience was like it was really good honestly it was really really good I didn't feel like there was any kind of latency or anything that I could actually notice while actually playing or you know pressing a key or moving the mouse it was absolutely seamless now one thing I did notice in first person shooters maybe and some racing games or fast moving games of any kind not in Fortnite because it's too colorful if you have dynamic black switched on and say for example you're playing Call of Duty and you go from scene to scene and you're running around you can almost see like a little flicker between the scenes now I don't know if other people have experienced this issue now this is just me I am using a high-speed HDMI cable I am using a pretty decent graphics card and a PC and this just seems to be the case now I hooked it up to my main editing PC and the same kind of thing happened when you have dynamic black switched on so maybe that's something to actually investigate further and this is for those of you that actually like to play games like Call of Duty and Counter-Strike. Uh, reaction times from using the keyboard and the mouse. I'm not using any kind of high-end gaming keyboard or mouse. It is actually pretty damn good and the whole experience is pretty fantastic overall. Uh, I did actually experience a dynamic black issue that I was having. So going from a scene like this to a darker scene which is about to come up or oh, it's not really dark, but a sudden change in light with the dynamic black switched on, there is like a little flicker. Now, most people might not notice it, but I did, and maybe I'm just being a little bit nitpicky here, but it was there and I could notice it. Um, it wasn't enough to actually ruin the gaming experience at all. The gaming experience still remains absolutely fantastic and top-notch. So big thumbs up on gaming performance. <laughs> So image quality, in terms of where we were when I made the original video and where I am now, um, if you look at the actual colour tones, especially playing content through a Virgin Media TV box, now this could be some other kind of TV box for you, but playing HD content looks a lot more natural and especially in the skin tone. I've toned down the sharpness a tiny bit and I've actually fiddled around with the brightness and the independent colour, the RGB colour. So, and Honestly, for me personally, the image is definitely about 15-20% to 20 better now than it was. Um, in terms of where this projector actually stands currently in the UK, for example the HD 143X, I've seen the prices fluctuate between £500 and all the way as low as £420. Currently, I believe Amazon have it priced at £469, and the closest thing to this, and like I said to you guys, if you follow me on Facebook, we talked about this on the Facebook page, and a lot of you had your uh, opinions, the BenQ 
thank you w1050 was another option to consider now i said because of my environment and the amount of light i have ambient light and I, that i would actually have to control to actually get any kind of decent image i decided to go with the optima as opposed to the benq because the w1050 had a lower lumen count of 2200 and even had a lower contrast ratio of 15,000 to one but one thing it did have going for it was that six speed rgb rgb color wheel so that would have probably compensated but because of the environment that i'm in this is definitely the best price to performance projector currently on amazon in my opinion in terms of any other projector that comes close to it would be the ViewSonic Lightstream. I believe it's called the PJD77 something or other. I'll link it in the video description. And that comes in at 3200 lumens and a 22,000 to 1 contrast ratio. And it's around the same price as a HD143X. Now I've actually seen that in action. And I actually think that this Optima version is a little bit better. In terms of daytime performance, this has been a big question from a lot of you. Because we don't cover this as much. And as you can see, this is like full blown windows open there's light coming from both ends of the room now i've got an open plan lounge that leads into the kitchen and there is a hell of a lot of light and there's a big bay window i plugged in my laptop and i literally watch videos for literally about an hour for literally let's see if i can say the word literally one more time literally now the experience itself was really good, I was impressed, but I did actually have to switch the projector to the bright mode to be able to actually get any kind of watchable image. But once you actually got there and you actually tweak with the settings, now as you can see on this image, I've actually just closed the blinds. I haven't closed the curtains, I've just closed the blinds and the experience was really good. In terms of image quality, I don't actually have any complaints with this projector. I actually think that the pricing is pretty damn spot on and it sits quite nicely in the marketplace with the ViewSonic and the BenQ W1050 being, in my opinion, the primary competitors. But if you've got a lot of ambient light, then this is definitely the option that you should be considering. <laughs> So let's address the first question. Do you need a good or an Optima pair of 3D DLP link glasses? No, you don't. You can use any 3D link DLP glasses off Amazon. Now, this pair costs about £17, and the more expensive pair I have is from Xkimi that costs about $25 to $30. And I will say this 3D content actually gives me a headache, so I'm not a big fan of it. But I did actually spend a little bit of time going through the different menu options. As you can see, it does work. Now, I did test it on a few different videos, and honestly, it did look pretty good. I don't own any 3D Blu-rays or anything like that, so that is not something I can test but the picture quality from what I did see was pretty damn good so the question remains now is will any cheap pair of Amazon do it or should you make use of that 3d sync port on the back of your projector well the Optima one I believe it costs somewhere in the region of about 45 pound my my ex gimme pair cost about 25 to 30 dollars or 30 odd pounds do I really need them? Well, probably not. But if you're going to buy the projector, you might as well buy the proper one because apparently you get a better contrast ratio and you also get support for a 144 hertz refresh rate with a newer pair that actually plugs in. So maybe worth consider actually adding this to your projector purchase. There you go. So guys, my final thoughts on the HD143X. Now, I have to say in terms of price to performance, Optima have actually nailed it here. That price range, I mean, I picked this thing up for about £420 on Amazon here in the UK literally about a month and a half ago, and I've actually lived with this projector since. Now, it's been three weeks since the first video went out, and I've had actual time to actually nitpick about this projector. In terms of image quality, I'm not going to nitpick. It does a pretty damn good job at this price point. In terms of things that I was really annoyed by, this might sound annoying, but the actual menu. Now, if you actually bring up the menu, it goes off after 10 seconds. Now, honestly, when you're actually trying to fiddle with the settings that is really annoying and this is just a little thing maybe increase it to 20 seconds for those of us that aren't like a lightning jackrabbit in terms of anything else ambient noise level it was pretty good stayed stable anywhere between 28 decibels and went up to as high as 36 if you cranked it up onto bright mode maybe a little bit louder but at a distance of about 1.2 meters away from the projector you're pretty good Image quality is absolutely superb, except for that one little gripe when it switches from a light scene to a dark scene. There seems to be a little flicker if you have dynamic black turned on. And I trust me when I say this, you want dynamic black turned on. It makes this projector. So guys, gaming performance was rock solid. And I genuinely think this thing is pretty good. I found myself using this projector more often than not on the reference setting. Now you can actually crank it up to bright 
especially if you're going to use it in the daytime to watch Netflix or something like that. But this is a great projector and it's going to be a great projector for somebody who's never owned one as well. So links are in the video description if you guys want to check it out. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you would like, share and subscribe. My name is Mike and this is Tech404 and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching this ridiculously long video.